This video is an introduction to a series of videos on Entity Framework. In this video, I start by introducing Entity Framework. Entity Framework is an Object Relational Mapping Framework, also known as an ORM. What does that mean, you may ask? Object Relational Mapping. Object Relational Mapping is the process of transferring data from a relational database into an object-oriented model by mapping the tables in a relational database into objects in any programming language of choice. This allows programmers to access data from a relational database right from within the programming language in an object-oriented manner. When people talk about ORM, they are simply referring to a library that implements the object relational mapping technique. An ORM library is simply an ordinary library that encapsulates the code needed to map and manipulate data from a database. ORMs eliminate the need to write SQL queries. They provide a communication channel between relational and non-relational systems. Entity Framework is an ORM library for .NET. It can be configured to work with a variety of databases, including Microsoft SQL, SQLite, MySQL, Azure Cosmo DB, etc. Before Entity Framework, the traditional way of accessing data from a database was using ADO.NET, which is a data access library that provides communication between relational and non relational systems through a set of common classes. The downside of using ADO.NET is that a developer has to implement most of the data access logic. This includes creating and managing connections, managing SQL queries, mapping database object types into corresponding c -sharp object types. This tends to be cumbersome and time-consuming. With the introduction of Entity Framework, all these processes have been automated. This eliminates the need to write custom code. Entity Framework takes the responsibility of mapping the database entities and their relationships into c -sharp objects. Aside from that, Entity Framework also provides methods to read, create, update, and delete data from a database right from within c -sharp. This allows us to manipulate data in an object-oriented manner. Entity Framework, through the DB context class, and the DB set class exposes methods that we can use to query data, as well as perform filtering, sorting, and other data related operations. The following code example demonstrates how data is queried using Entity Framework. Suppose we want to query a list of customers from the customers table in a database. We can achieve that by using an instance of the DB context class. The DB context class here represents a session with a database. All access to the database is done through the DB context class. To access the customer's table, we reference the customer property. This customer property is defined on the DB context class and is mapped to the customer table in the database. To filter or sort data, we can call the filtering and sorting methods defined on the customer property. This can be done in a sequence through a process called method chaining, where every method in the sequence performs an action on the result of the previous method. Finally, we can call the toList method. This will return the result as an enumerable list. When Entity Framework processes this query, it converts this code into an optimized SQL query which is then run against the database. With that being said, we can conclude that Entity Framework is a library that encapsulates the code needed to communicate with a relational database and provide the queried data in form of objects, thereby allowing the developer to focus more on the business logic of the application. Now remember to check out part two of this video series where I talk about how to set up and configure Entity Framework for your .NET project. 